Well, today, Hillary talks with the wonderful Claire Jasmine Beloved, and um, what a win to get this woman on my YouTube channel. Um, Claire is an artist, a creatrix, a facilitator of, I don't know, so much more than just workshops, um, but that's kind of the arena. She works in one of her arenas. For me, she is the maker of the most magical clothing, and... Um, You've all seen me tartan around in this one and that one, and I'll do a little flounce later for you. Um, and that's how I heard about this incredible woman. So I guess when you hang out in a world of wombs and menstruality and what have you, it becomes a slightly small world. And the first time I heard about you, you were putting a call out because um, you were trying to sell some of your art. And what I loved about you was your vulnerability because you said... I need to sell X number of these pictures um, because I've got to pay my rent at the end of the month on your studio, I think it was. And I thought, well, bloody hell, 30 quid. A, I like that picture. B, that's a really, and it was such a good lesson for me straight up of asking for what you need. Um, and I think that was, I don't know, probably four or five years ago. And then the next thing I bought was my first silk caftan. And I've since bought several more of those. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's how we met. And like I say, um, you describe yourself as a self-affirmed, wobbly, wild woman. And you really claim your vulnerability and you wear it so beautifully. How easy is that for you? And does it get easier with practice? Hi, Hilary. Gorgeous to be here, swooning in our caftans yes. together. This is the first time I've got out my pyjamas. So it's, uh... <laughs> I know, I know. We're both really <laughs> excited to get makeup on for today. Um, so I don't know how to be anything else. Only me. I'm really not very good at trying to put on different masks in different spaces and not say it how it is. I don't know whether that's partly a scouse thing partly because I'm from Liverpool and that's how um, our energy is, very like say it as it is. Um, and also just years of um, crap and not um, going through so much that I don't feel like really that I've got anything to lose but to be myself. So for me to be something other, other than vulnerable is really hard. <laughs> I'm not very good at like holding that in and putting on a, you know, a powerful mask in any way. And do you think that's something you got easier at, to find to do and to present yourself to the world in that way as you've got older? I definitely think I've got fiercer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I definitely think I don't care as much. Um, you know, I was a really shy 20, 22, 23 year old and a really shy young person. And I just think all the things that I've been through, depression, um, just getting to 47 and being in one piece, I just really don't care anymore and want to just speak from my own truth. And, and celebrate what you've achieved. Um, and um, one of the things I love about when I, when I read about you and part of the story I know of you is, um, I don't know when it was, but at some point you were talking to a business advisor saying you wanted to put your art, make your art wearable, and um, they weren't that keen or, or supportive of you, were they? Yeah, I think um, people in different fields, are, I, I kind of dance between um lots of places so I don't really like totally belong to like the goddess movement or the business enterprise women in business movement or anything I kind of like to dance in and then dance out again and I kind of have got my own um way of being in the world and um and that's juicy because I think people have all got big opinions of how you should act and you know act like a businesswoman or act like you're a priestess or you can't say this or that and I don't really fit in well to that but I think um for a long time I've just tried to make my own party and make sure that as many people as possible feel welcome um that was my doorbell I'm not Ooh. gonna let the dog out I'm not <laughs> gonna answer it I'm coming right <laughs> okay lovely <laughs> okay I'm, I'm right back I'm right with you yes and I love that thing about not being um kind of pigeonholed into one thing because as a massage therapist um as a 
woman who works with, you know, I don't like to call myself a healer because I don't really feel like a healer. Or I don't like to be particularly known as, you know, the goddess woman or any of those things. Right. And I dance between all of those. But most of all, I'm a middle class woman, middle aged, middle class woman from Surrey, just like you're a Liverpudlian. And it's just like, I can't be anything except that. And I can be the only thing I can be is true to myself. And mm -hmm. that for me has been what I've learned as I've um, come to the other side of menopause. I am now postmenopausal. So just because obviously I just like to bring menstrual and um, all of those words into any conversation I have. How does your menstrual cycle play with your art? And, and what do you feel about menopause, which is going to be your next? Mm, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> I was quaking at what my postmenopausal self was like. Um, well, I think that I didn't really think much about my cycle till um i did the red school training with alexandra pope and just amazing experience but it felt very familiar to me the cycle because i feel like i've always operated as an artist within a creative cycle and um, so it felt really really familiar um because it's how i work with my art and how i create things so it was really beautiful to fit the two together mm -hmm. and they do fit together beautifully and um i do feel uh, the approach in, um, I do feel like I'm in perimenopause and the approach of menopause. And because I've got such great role models, you and Alexandra and all, all fabulous women, uh, I'm really excited about it actually. And I just yeah. think it can only be more powerful. I know it's a difficult rite of passage as well. Um, I think it's a difficult rite of passage if you haven't got anyone leaving breadcrumbs. Um, and you know it's that trail of breadcrumbs that that if we've got those to follow and some little messages along the way to give us hope when we need a little bit of a kind of this is this is the way you come or this is the way it's those signposts and um, the reason it's always been so frightening for women is they've never had the signposts and that's a huge amount of your art I mean your art you write messages your poetry is in it um, you know your workshops you do the paint your own goddess workshops, which um, I am going to get myself up to one of these bloody years when we can move around the country again. Tell me about the paint your own goddess workshops and, and what you see in those. Um, I've been doing those for about 17 years. Really? Um, just started as a small thing, just, um, just as a way of women, well, and men and anyone that wants to, to tell their stories through art, which I've always done since I've been a little girl, worked out my life and who I was through creating that and drawing images. And um, so I did them in lots of different ways until I had a really difficult breakdown about about 10 years ago now. Mm -hmm. and, and I painted these 10 big powerful mamas, really like life-size paintings to bring myself back from this depression. And I was up till 10 two o'clock in the morning painting these great big women and one was about my sensuality reclaiming that one was about um, my creativity reclaiming that so these 10 mamas came and then um and then I started doing the process with loads of scouse Liverpudlian women nanas and mums and daughters and then we got an exhibition in Tate Liverpool with a hundred goddesses Oh my goodness, that must have been fantastic. And we took it into prisons and care homes and schools. So we've got a thousand life-size self-portraits of women as goddesses. Then we did it with young girls. That was amazing. And then we did it with lads, Big Love, My Brother. So it's just um, a really beautiful process. And, it, you know, lots of our women have gone on to go to university and do art degrees um, and just love the process of feeling free to create, really. Um, and, you know, for me, when I see what you do, it's, it really helps me to um, understand that creativity is, is, it's not a, um, it's not a prescriptive. It's just like, cause I've watched your workshops and I've seen you, um, you know, on Instagram and what have you and seeing what women produce. And I know for a fact that those aren't women who are, are not all of them would normally have access to paint and and some of those young kids and the boys that you've worked with and just to have had the little snippets it's such a melting pot that you you seem to be able to create the cauldron in your witchy way um, and throw in all the ingredients and out of there you get people producing um, the most 
moving, moving images. Um, and I guess, you know, it's been really, really exciting for me to, to start. I've just started this year playing a bit with paint. Um, and um, that's been my postmenopausal creativity. And it's mm. people like you have really inspired me. So not only do you paint, you write poetry, and then you had the idea of actually putting your painting onto your wonderful clothing. And um, this Ooh, being- Oh, swell, we'll swell together. Yeah, I've got no bra on actually, so I'll have to go well, like that. I actually have got one on today and I put it on specially for you, love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, I couldn't find any clothes that I loved. Um, I remember being in a changing room and just um, on the phone to my wife saying, you know, I can't find anything that fits and anything that's big enough for my size is like boring and tight. And, um, and I guess that I, if I can't find something in the world, I, I create it. So. Yeah. And it's creating of something that excites me. I'm not really interested in like the selling of it because my wife Sandra is always like, now, so we're going to sell that to get the money back. And I'm like, oh, I don't care about that bit. <laughs> but you have been selling and you've been selling all over the world. <laughs> I do sell it all over and people like collect it now. So, and each of the pieces has got a story. So that's what I really love stories. And, and what's the story behind this one? So that's the, the women's mandala. mandala. And it's all the different rites of passage and stages of women. So it's got doorways and crones in there and maiden images. And I've got the Guadalupe Miracle Mama on. I'm trying to find a, a little Miracle oh, Mama. Her. Is that a Very cap or is that a top you're wearing? Same as yours. Okay, Same good. Just her. checking that it's not something I haven't got. <laughs> um, so I, I think that like our women save up for a piece and they're attracted to the story behind it and what it means to them they've got little poems on the back of them as well mm -hmm. so you can see that so um and when they're wearing that piece they're like well i'm wearing the miracle mama or phoenix rising today because i need some of that energy which is really really gorgeous it's a lovely thing so you know your work is creeping out into the world and affecting so many of us and um I really hope that I get to introduce you to a few more people. I have introduced you to a few of my you American have friends. some juicy people. Um, um, so, you know, I happen to know that you're out there on the West Coast and, um, uh, you know, I know you're on the East Coast as well. So let's just get Claire Jasmine Beloved and her work all around the world. So talking of all the workshops, you're, um, you've done so much work um, yourself and degrees and your own way through the world, but you've done a workshop with um, one of my shiros, Clarissa Pincola Estes. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Oh, well, it was amazing meeting women from all around the world doing the training. So we learned about how to teach the stories. Um, it was very academic because our writing is really academic and beautiful with the stories. So it was how long was the workshop? How long were you out there? Um, with her? Six days. Right. Very intensive. Um, but really it fitted in with the work that I've been doing mm. for years with groups and I've always told stories and done therapeutic work around that. So I also then took it and put me own, matched it with my own therapeutic work and how I work and creativity and um I've been you know running programs around that and it's really really lovely work and mm. to do so Absolutely. and Clarissa you're not allowed to um like approach her because she's protecting her energy and um but I thought it was really funny because I was in the shop one day of course <laughs> at the retreat centre and um I had one of the dresses on so she came up to me and was like oh where did you get that dress which I thought was funny because I was like don't approach her but she, <laughs> she approached you <laughs> has she bought one no not yet so. no well, you need to send her another <laughs> link and remind her um so you're currently doing um because you do workshops in person in Liverpool um but obviously um because we're in the midst of a pandemic that is not possible at the moment but you do have an online workshop and I is it going on for a year and can we join in at any point or do we have to start from the beginning? So I started this in January, luckily. I was very resistant to doing an online programme because I'm so tactile. I love like being around people and, you know, feeling their energy and hugging and, and I just love the energy of our groups in person. Um, but people were asking me from Australia and America, you know, we can't get to you. Will you do something online? I was really like 
my own ian resistant but then i realized that i could weave in my artwork and create beautiful pages and videos and so i started getting really into it and I'm making the the page and the online course a work of art you know real you just beautiful. can't help yourself can you, you know, like so it feels lovely and it sounds lovely and there's playlists and there's art so um that's been running from january with people all over the world on that one and then there was new people wanted to join so we are starting in may the end of may okay. a fairy tale medicine it's called and um it's for a year it's a year-long course and we look at like a story a month and then all the music around that story the poetry the artwork it's really therapeutic and you know a lot of the women are saying that out of anything else that I've done in my life has been the most powerful and of so course we rock up once a month and yeah well you can look at the material all month we have a zoom call every week if you want to come into that okay. um, and we build like a real community and it's great you know because we're all thinking after lockdown I'm going to Australia to visit that woman we're going to go to America we'll have a meet up here and there so I mean very simply I think what's powerful for women as you'll know is to have good friends and a good mm -hmm. solid circle around you and I think this gives you an international circle of gorgeousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh beautiful <laughs> and you know it's so interesting isn't it that we are in the midst of this pandemic finding ways to connect over Zoom. And some days I am Zoomed out, OMG. It is exhausting. It's so much more tiring um, holding yeah, space on a and Zoom. And sometimes I feel like, oh, I don't want to go and do that Zoom call. But once I'm in there and people are sharing the story, there is minutes when I forget that this is yes. between us. Um, but also we've made sure that, I mean, a lot of online courses, it's hours and hours of videos and you're like, oh, I can't face that. So we've made everything bite size, like five minutes, 10 minutes, and also with just audio. So you can just go for a walk and listen to bedtime stories being read to you. And, and have you had to really up your tech in order to be able to do this? Have you been on a big learning curve or are you just naturally techy? I've got a lovely friend, Sarah Stars, who's helping. So that helps and yeah. share the work and the gorgeousness. But um, I think because I want to create things, I've always like just found my way with tech. So, um, but I mean, when I first started doing videos in January, because I was used to running big classes, I don't know about you, but you have to project your voice loads. Mm -hmm. And then on the Zoom, I'm like, hi. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh. I know. Well, my, my first YouTube, someone said, turn the volume down. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I've been learning. And, um, but I think people also like, it's not dead polished, the course. It's like us on video laughing and making mistakes and just being us. And I think, you know, the online world can be so like putting its best face on that people kind of like that realness and feeling like it's just your mate on the which well, is well that comes back to being a wobbly wild woman and i just love the fact that you that's the, the term you use to describe yourself and it's like we can be wobbly and we can be wild and we can be professional and we can share but we can also just be real and make mistakes and fuck up and it's all all right and um you know it's inspiring to to everyone i think, I think it's permission given isn't it and i think that we're longing for permission that we often didn't get from our parents or our mum. And, and sometimes you just need someone else to lead the flag i remember speaking at a big conference um in london and i just rocked up as myself with me big sparkly trainers on and and people had paid for these big stands that were like a thousand pound but everyone was like who's that woman with the pink sparkly trainers <laughs> um and i was given a talk and i just like told some of my story and i was like do you know what i don't know whether we can swear on this hillary but we can swear. Yes, you can swear. um i was like do you know what let's just fuck it all and just get real about this problem it's like talking about unemployment and afterwards everyone like undid their ties all these businessmen they took the shoes and socks off and went and sat on the grass and were talking about creative solutions things but the woman after me she um got up on the stage in her big suit and she was someone high up in the dwp and she just got this and went well fuck it all like ripped it up and threw it in the air and she said i can't follow with the shit i was gonna say after that because it's not real yeah 
And yeah. so I think people are just longing yeah. for permission to be real. So just, you know, if what you're saying is let's just show our true selves and either take it or bloody leave it. You know, if you don't like it, move on. Find someone you do like. I don't need to waste your time. You don't need to waste my time. And, and I think like it, let's grow together. There's something that um, is quite powerful for me is about if you've got that freedom, which I have because I work for myself, so I'm not answerable to anyone really, mm. um, is to use that leverage to speak for others who maybe haven't got that privilege mm. or power and to use my voice where I can to tell the truth because I know there's lots of people who are too frightened of losing their jobs or mm -hmm. you know, they rely on something or they just they haven't got the privilege so to really yeah. use our privilege to leverage the wildness and the realness yeah and so if you had a fairy tale to choose for today what would it be um well I love La Loba um, and Laloba is the bone woman. She's like a magic crone. She's probably got like a cigar. She's smoking a cigar or maybe got a roll behind her ear. And she like doesn't give a hoot. Um, but she's very powerful. And she collects the bones of all that's been abandoned, lost, disowned or stolen from us. And puts them all together in a cave and sings a beautiful healing song over them to bring back our wild selves and um she's the first story in our fairy tale medicine and i i love her i'm trying to be more la loba okay so today let's all go and find some bones of our lives and that's kind of um you know that i think that's what the perimenopausal journey for me is about it's really interesting and i am writing a, a book you know i'm trying to write it i write i write 1500 words a day and delete about 1200 but surely <laughs> by the end of this pandemic i'll have a book <laughs> but for me that's exactly it it's about picking over the bones of my life mm -hmm. perimenopause and it was just like bringing back what needed to be healed burying what could be left behind in a you know in a beautiful way not just burying it so it never bothered me but just burying it with honor and grace mm. and um seeing what magic we can make and that's what's happening right now isn't it we're all being thrown into our own shit essentially um and i like to think of myself as a pretty positive person and you know my glass is always half full and I have had a life of privilege. It's easy for me to to dance through the the world that I live in, mm. but um, I've been really thrown up against some stuff this last few weeks of this pandemic. I need an audience, and I haven't got one. My husband's lovely, but you know, he doesn't like the m much noise as I want to make. I've been talking to the lettuce and the the yeah. blossom and the trees. <laughs> For us people who like to be out there running <laughs> workshops and performing, um, you know, it's really interesting for me not to have that performance opportunity. I've been reading loads of novels because I know that the New Age movement and spirituality movement is very much about living the moment. But when the moment's a bit shit or limited, like it's great to just lose yourself in a different country or life or story. So... For me, like novels are just like what I'm sucking up, you know. Um, that was actually going to be um, my last question to you, actually, because um, I, I'm on your, I loved your most recent blog about carrying four or five books around with you wherever you go. And that's me. And I have to say, um, from all the traveling that I've done over the years, I have developed a love for my Kindle because that was my mm -hmm. way. Because prior to the Kindle, my rucksack, you know, to take on and off the plane, the little bag was, would always have four or five books because my terror is running out of things to read. Oh, it's like um, you wear like me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I have my Kindle, which I carry all my books around. And um, one of the things that, um, that I learned a, a it was a good few years ago I was chatting to a, a friend a guy I was like hi how have you been and he said um oh yeah I've been really well I said what you've been up today so I've been really busy I was like oh what have you been doing I've been reading all day and I scoffed at the time thinking busy busy reading a book is busy you know I've done three loads of washing and blah, 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 blah. you know, bloody men don't know how to be busy and this weekend I was busy the whole weekend reading I saved myself Elizabeth Gilbert's um, City of Girls oh wow I haven't read that yet so. uh, do you know I'm so chuffed I saved it um and I just lay outside it was really nice and sunny here this weekend and spent the whole weekend reading 
Um, so yeah, I think reading is a way of escapism, but also as a way of, it just opens my mind. It opens my mind to dreaming. So it's for me, every time I read a book, it allows me to step into a, a little bit more dream time. In, so what are a, you reading? I mean, in a way, I think they're more healing than self-help books. Yeah. You know, um, I I love, um, I don't know if you've read the Irish writer Niall Williams. His work's beautiful. I'll send you some links. But um, I used to give his novels away on my workshops and just say, this is a piece of hope because of the, the story was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I wrote to him once and I said, you know, these books give me hope. And he said, he wrote back and said, well, I'm sitting here writing, thinking no bastards reading these. So thank you for letting me know that. So, how do you spell Niall? Uh, N I A double -L, L, I think now Williams. Yeah. Um, so I'll give you, I'll send you some links. But yeah. also, I've just read Isabella Lande's new book about. Have you read it? No, that's my next. <gasps> so it's about um, the Spanish War and then the Revolution in Chile, and and really listening to what people went through and how they like fell in love during those times, even though they were, you know, extraordinary times. It really helps me think and cope with these times thinking you know we can learn from our ancestors we can learn from history that people kept on loving kept on having adventures mm -hmm. uh, in really extraordinary times it's an extraordinary world and every human is extraordinary just the mere fact that we're here and i think you're extraordinary oh and you too darling um, so thank you very much now can we just um be clear your workshop is open um your online workshop let's give it a big bloody up to claire jasmine beloved's oh. online workshop and it's called fairy tale medicine yes and it starts well you can sign up from now and it the closing date is the end of Mo may okay. oh, he said the end of may um and you know you can always visit my website to have pieces of magic and these are my new things do you like them yes Moon and magic but you can get them in like all kinds of juicy words okay then and um what else have you got in the clothing line coming up love have you got any clothing um, coming through at the moment well, all the clothes, my studio is in an art centre, which is all locked up. So everyone's like desperate for it to open so they can get their mitts on it, which is quite good, actually. There's nothing like longing for a drag. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, but I've got bits of jewellery and I've started making these mugs. Oh, you can't see it because of the funny screen. I've got what it says, make way, menopausal queen of no bullshit. Love it. Love it. So I, I'm always creating. You are, you're bloody the Kath Kidson of the, the <laughs> goddess, demonic, crazy, wobbly oh. woman world. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, we, there is a place for you in this world. And um, I am always happy to shop with you. And I will be shopping with you as soon as I get some bloody work under Come my Come on, let the money roll between us all. Let that money roll between <laughs> us all. Um, because, yeah, we all need to do it. And that's the other thing I like about you is that, um, yeah, money is something that you, you, you know, you're keen to earn and you talk about it. And, yeah, you're realistic. Art does not come free. Yeah, well... I'm not great at the money thing. I might be post-menopause. Um, but as long as I can create and buy paint and um, get by, I'm really happy just that people love me work and that the stories go out in the world. And I just love seeing people wearing things and shining in them and having my artwork above the bed. So that's my real driver. Um, okay, we'll put Sandra in charge of selling them. Yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> Says you can only keep one dress this season and I'm like oh, I'm trying to sneak another one off. <laughs> well I have to say I've got my eyes on a coat that will be my one for this year um yeah definitely got my eyes on a coat so Claire Jasmine beloved I am going to put your website details underneath this interview um I recommend that all people check out your clothing and um if you've got the opportunity get on that class so mm -hmm. thank you so much for dropping in and seeing me for a moment and mm -hmm. good luck and let's go read a book because it's raining thank you so much and i can't wait to read your book so keep on writing yes well hopefully you won't wait too long love <laughs> all right then cheers honey see you soon bye 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 lovely <laughs>